Hello there, I'm Guilherme Miller and I'm a web developer. I have a new course on Learnable called Introduction to HTML. In it, you'll learn the basics of this language, like its main tags, how to code semantically, and how to test and validate your code. It's a beginner's course, so if you don't know anything about HTML, this is a great place to start. Check out this lesson from the course. Hi there, I'm Guilherme. In this lesson, we are going to overview the differences between HTML versions and why it's best to use HTML5 today. In most cases, there is no good reason to use earlier versions of HTML, but it's important to know how we got here. In this video, I'm going to mention two acronyms a lot, the W3C and the WATWG. The W3C is the World Wide Web Consortium. To quote themselves, the World Wide Web Consortium, W3C, is an international community that develops open standards to ensure the long-term growth of the web. Basically, they standardize languages like HTML and CSS. The specifications pass through a process of working draft, candidate recommendation, proposed recommendation, and finally, W3C recommendation, in which the specification can be considered final and published for the browser makers and web developers. The other group, the WATWG, or Web Hypertext Application Technology Working Group, was founded by individuals of Apple, Mozilla Foundation, and Opera Software in 2004. HTML4 was already seven years old, and apparently no progress was being made in improving the language to tackle the new challenges that were arising at the time, like web applications and the ever more complex websites. The W3C was concerned with XHTML 2.0, a version of XHTML that was not even backwards compatible with the current HTML. In other words, it could break the internet. Slowly, the web community noticed that they didn't need to wait for the W3C to do something about HTML, and that the browser makers and web professionals could have a say in the future of web development. After many years of work and collaboration of the WatWG and companies like Mozilla, Apple, Microsoft and Opera, HTML5 became a reality and its concepts were being published all around the world. I personally started using it in some way or, no or another in 2009 to 2010. As a result, the W3C has cancelled development on XHTML 2.0 and recently HTML5 has finally been published as a W3C recommendation on October 2014. The web community showed that it can indeed change the fate of HTML. First, I'll show you HTML4, a version that was published as a recommendation in 1997. This particular version, HTML 4.01, was published as a recommendation in 1999. Here it is. The tags are in uppercase here, but that was not mandatory. Many people use the tags in uppercase because it helped to set the tags apart from regular text. The practice of using lowercase tags became more popular after XHTML, in which lowercase tags are a part of the rules. Here you can see that the rules are as loose as the current version of HTML. The tags can be in any case you want. Tags like P can be left open in some cases, although there is not a recommended practice. Void tags like BR do not have closing indications. Also note here that the doc type tag and the meta tag defining the character set are much more complex and difficult to memorize. The doc type has a link to the DTD, or document type definition, with all the specifications for the language. The meta tag has a more verbose writing, but ultimately are achieving the same results. There are more differences from HTML5, but these are the main ones. This version of the language is based in another one called SGML, or Standard Generalized Markup Language. In an effort to simplify the implementation of HTML and its use by browsers and developers, as well as making it more easily extensible, the W3C began work on an XML implementation of HTML. That is, a version of the HTML language based in the XML language, which stands for Extensible Markup Language. XHTML, or Extensible Hypertext Markup Language, 
version 1.0 was published as the W3C recommendation in the year 2000 with three DTDs or document type definitions. XHTML strict, which as the name says was more strict and didn't consider valid many presentational HTML tags and attributes and was a good way to learn to write good code. This way it also encouraged the use of CSS, which at the time was not widely used. The other DTD is XHTML transitional, a more forgiving version, and the last one is XHTML frameset, for use with frames, something that you almost don't see anymore. Let's see an example of a slightly newer version, XHTML 1.1, published as a recommendation in 2001. Here you can see that some things are a little different. XML is much stricter with code, and that taught developers to code better. All tags have to be closed, even void tags, which can be called self-closing. Like this meta tag here, and the br tag here. There is also the declaration that this is an XML document, and the doc type is very complex as well. The HTML tag contains a lot of links to specifications, and the meta defining the car set is the same of HTML force. As this is based on XML, the rules of the language apply, like having to write all tags in lowercase, all attributes must have quoted values, and that's not necessarily the case in regular HTML. All tags must close, even tags that have no content. Nesting of tags must be correct, for example, I can't write here a strong tag, then put a span tag inside and close them incorrectly like this. Style and script tags have to have type attributes specifying text slash CSS or text slash JavaScript, and they have to include these strange C data tags. And the result? XHTML, along with the web standards movement, brought a lot of good practice to web development, but it also had its problems. One of them is that XML is supposed to be a strict language, and theoretically, Browsers should throw an error when any part of the code was incorrect. That, of course, never happened. Also, for the document to be true XML, it would need to be served to the browser as an XML file. Notice here in the meta tag that the content attribute is specifying text slash HTML as the type of the document. The correct type for this kind of document should be application slash XHTML plus XML. This never enjoyed the support it should have at the time, so many websites used XHTML without fully committing to it. This meme type makes the page behave like a XML file, with the browser throwing an error at the slightest invalid code. There is also an XHTML-like implementation for HTML5. If you want to use HTML5 with XHTML rules, you can. It is called XHTML5 Polyglot. This is an example, although I must admit I haven't used it very much. However, I have provided links to get you started if you are interested. These links are available in the resources section at the end of the course. This then concludes the lesson. We have overviewed the main versions of HTML that were and still are very widely used. HTML5 is a combination of the WhatWG's work together with web professionals, browser makers, and later the W3C. It's a much simpler approach to markup languages, and it even offers an XHTML implementation if you want to work that way. As I said in the beginning of the video, there is no real reason to use HTML4 or XHTML1. Just stick to HTML5 or Polyglot XHTML5 and you're good to go. I hope that you have learned some new things here. If you liked this lesson, check out Introduction to HTML at Learnable.com. Thank you and see you there.